Hey, hey guys and girls, this is Alexey from Ace5 Studios and today this is Materials 106 where I'll be explaining to you why black and white images is so important in the way the materials work in Cinema 4D. So, we have this plain material with a reflectance channel, nothing special, and a plane. Now, uh, let's, we've already talked about how to build practical materials in the previous lessons and here I want to talk about a more uh, technical view of how things actually happen. So let's have a look at Fresnel that we regularly apply to the reflectance channel. And I told you that, you know, on the low angle, it's very reflective. And when you look straight up, it's not reflective at all. Now, this is controlled by color because reflectance is controlled. Everything here is controlled by color, black or white. Black is a value of zero. White is a value of one. And one means reflective and black and white and zero means not reflective. So let's load the Fresnel texture into the color channel so we can see this easier. If we look at the angle here, it's pretty white. But if we look up at a straight at a right angle, it goes completely black. This is what this shader does. It affects the color of an object or polygons of it or an area of an object, depending on the angle of observance. And this isn't just black and white. You can change this color to, you know, you can make it red and then you can make this one blue. And then as you go down, it goes blue or yellow. It goes red, yellow, red, yellow. So but the point is this shader, its main job is to make things black and white, depending on the angle. And that's why reflectance works like that. So here it's the same thing. Now, black and white can not only be, it can not only control reflectance; it can control everything. For example, it can control how blurry something is in reflectance. So let's say here, let's make our color a bit darker so we can see the reflectance sharp more sharply. Actually, let's turn off Fresnel together while we're here. Let's turn our layer Fresnel. Basically, this is like a more advanced Fresnel that's a separate tab, but you could also load the Fresnel into here and have the same effect. See, no reflection, full reflection. If we turn this off, we have full reflection all the time. So we always see the sky and stuff. But if we change the brightness down to, for example, we change from white, make it black, there's no reflection anywhere. So let's, for example, control roughness. Here, there's a little black arrow on roughness. So generally we make it blur reflections. We can load a texture into here. We can load a noise and we can hook up its contrast. So it's more black and white. And here now, when we drag the roughness up, it'll only be affecting those areas which are, uh, which have a white value on them. So this is very handy. But these black and white maps, they go a lot further than just controlling reflectance and various parts of, um, <laughs> various parts of the shader. This is also very useful in MoGraphs. Let's turn this back to dielectric so it's white. I can color back to white. For example, we can use the same textures. Let's, for example, here, let's go to color. And uh, no, let's go to noise. I was black and white noise, and let's crank up the contrast a bit. And now what we can do is if we uh, add a displacer underneath the plane, and then we change the and we change the shading here to, for example, instead of we can load the noise directly in here, but it's easier if we just go to color and we pick the material that we want to get the color from. As you can see, it affects it, but we don't have enough subdivisions here, maybe. Or it's just not strong enough. Oh, yes, no, the important thing here is we have to change this to 2D. There you go. Now, as you can see, it dips down in the blacks and it goes up in the whites. Let's exaggerate this a bit. So you have the blacks where it's low down and it goes up where it's white. So this is the way you control things. And uh, this is not just on a plane, like I have here, for example, I have my five man here. And the material uh, that we have on him is a checkerboard. And we can also use this to control various qualities of the reflection. So we can, for example, copy this and paste it into reflectance. We can paste it into the... Uh, so we'll have, you can see the black ones. And now let's turn off the color here. Let's turn off the mix so it's just white. But now you can see just the reflectance is controlling how rough something is. See? Uh, like on these white squares, you have, uh, I think we, yeah, we can put the color way down to, there you go. So now you can see how the, ah, bad example. Let's turn off Fresnel here. There you go. Now you can see how the roughness is being masked it's fully reflective and then you start bringing in the roughness on just the white patches. So this can be used in any kind of project, not just using squares. And is furthermore, this can be used on MoGraph. 
on cloners. So for example, let's crank up the contrast here a bit more in the color. So contrast, bring it out to more. And let's make a little cube. It's over here. And let's put it into a MoGraph cloner holding the Alt key. And let's change the cloner. Let's turn this render instances on and change the cloner to, where is it? From linear to object and drag our plane into it, into object. And we're gonna have to make these cubes way smaller. There you go. And now look what happens if we use a shader. Let's select our cloner here and then go MoGraph effectors and shader effector. And we will drag here in our shading. We will again choose color and we'll drag this material in there. As you can see right now, it's changing them, but not all the way. So we've got a vector here, parameter, no parameter, and change this to minus one or zero. No, zero, so minus one to make them smaller. And see right now, all the white stuff has become uh, zero because white means this effector is doing the work. And on black areas, the effector is not doing the work. But we can change this easily. We can just drag the minimum down to zero and change this to 100. Or, oops, uh, where was it? We just have to reverse this slightly. There you go. And now, as you can see, we have the black spots are now hiding the clones and we can animate this. So if we, this is still all driven by this texture. So if we change the animation speed to one and we press play, you will see it's animating. By the way, don't forget, if you can't see your texture moving in the viewport when you press play, this is the play button by the way, it's because on your material, um, if you double click on it, in editor, you have to tick this animate preview button. It, it, this can lag your computer, so be careful with this. And see now the black parts will hide, the white will hide clones so yeah i hope this helped you this was like my point was here to deliver the message of, of how black and white maps work on everything how they affect um you know how you can use them to control stuff materials and beyond in cinema 4d this was alexei from ace 5 studios be sure to check out my website for more tutorials and even more if you're watching this on youtube uh check out my website because sometimes i add more information there and links and yeah and also check out my various rig characters player you can you know i have some free characters and i have some premium characters you can buy you know i hope you like them and you know i will appreciate all the support don't forget to comment and like and share and you know share the goodness thanks so yeah